Cool. We're live again. Really excited for this episode. We're joined by Naveen Jain of Clavio, who is an SMS expert, and my lovely co-presenter, Leah. So let's get straight into it. Naveen, why don't you give us, give us a little intro into what your background is at Clavio and how you're involved in SMS over there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first off, thank you for having me. Really excited to uh, to be here. Uh, excited to speak with you both. Um, my background with Clavio, I joined Clavio um, in January 2018. I was around employee 100. Um, I believe we officially crossed the thousand employee mark um, a couple of weeks ago, which is just insane that in three and a half years we've grown this quickly. Um, I was initially selling the email solution that we have when we launched SMS in 2019. Um, I was asked to move over to kind of help the go to market um, piece for this channel. Um, have absolutely loved it. Um, Clavio has been asked by our customers since we were founded in 2012, like, how do we get SMS in Clavio? Clavio's goal was always to become like the experts in email first. Um, after we had, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 customers and raised the money that we did, we said, okay, like we can consider ourselves experts in email. Let's go build SMS. So we had been testing SMS since I think 2017, 2018, um, and then launched it in 2019, um, which is really exciting. I work very closely with our customers. I also um, do a lot of work internally with like our product teams to share feedback, marketing, um, to, to highlight success stories that our customers are having. Um, so I've really been focused on SMS since we launched it. Um, love to see that we already have over 5,000 customers using Clavio SMS um, to date, and that number just continues to grow. Um, and the reason is it just it's a channel that that brands are, are looking to leverage because their customers are asking for it. Um, Clavio, you know, we're not in the business to build things that aren't going to be useful. We build things that our customers are looking for. And, and our customers have customers that want that channel. And that's why we, that's why we launched SMS um, because so many subscribers, I mean, personally myself, I, and maybe I, maybe it's because I'm, I, I sell SMS all day, but I definitely buy from SMS almost every yeah. day too. Um, there are brands that just know me, get me and, and send me messages. And, and I use SMS for almost everything now for, you know, booking, booking a party for my daughter to my dog's food. SMS, I, you know, SMS gets me. Yeah. Makes complete sense. Before we go into some of those strategies, um, I always get asked by all clients, and we have even before you guys released SMS, like where is Clavio SMS available at the moment? Obviously, you launched in North America, but where else are you available? Which territory is now? Yeah. Um, so Clavio SMS is available in the US, Canada, UK, and Australia um, to date. So we're in four of the major um countries in the world. We will be expanding um to other countries, most likely. Um not most likely, definitely in 2022, we'll be expanding to other countries, but US, Canada, UK, and Australia today. Great stuff. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to let Leah dive into the first question and we'll start to talk about strategy. Amazing. So um, obviously you've said about um, Clavio setting up SMS. Um, what would you say the main SMS flows for an e-commerce store are, um, especially to focus on? Yeah, um, it's a great question. And I think this is something that um, brands should be leveraging right away. Um, the first one, and this is very rarely will I tell a business what to do because they know their business better than anyone. But I, I'm like this close to saying it's a necessity is a welcome flow. The welcome flow is a flow that you absolutely need to do. Why? If I give my phone number to someone and I don't hear from them right away, I'll forget who they are. So if they send me a a broadcast or a campaign message in a couple of weeks. I don't remember who they are and I'm immediately opting out. Secondly, it's important because usually to get a phone number or to get consent for a SMS subscriber, you need to give something. I give my email to almost any brand I go to. I have a spam folder. I have a dummy email. Like I can, I can give emails that are there. I have one phone number. That's it. When I get a text message, and again, I've signed up for probably myself and 
10 other people's share of SMS marketing programs. But when I get a text message, I look at my phone right away. When I get an email, I let it sit there. I don't need to check it. So usually there's a give and take to get my phone number. You're going to say, get 10%, get 15% off, get early access, free shipping. It doesn't always have to be a discount. It could just be like exclusivity to like know before. I want to know that that's going to happen. So I want to hear from the brand that I gave you my phone number. I'm going to get something from you. So that's why the welcome flow is, is almost a requirement. The abandoned cart flow is the second one that I definitely recommend adding SMS to. Um, Clavio has actually seen brands that add SMS to their abandoned cart flows increase revenue per recipient by 20%, which is really exciting. It shows that SMS will drive results really quickly. So those are the two flows that uh, every brand I speak with, I'm like, these are the two that you need to get started with. Some of the other ones that are there, um, customer winbacks or reviews is a great way to leverage SMS. Obviously, like, you know, you don't, you don't want to send it right away, send it like a couple weeks after the order is fulfilled. Um, Another one that I think, or another reason why that's very valuable is ask if they have any questions. Mm -hmm. um, that way, like you can easily like help them if they have any questions there. Um, a flow for any brand that sells like a consumable good is a replenishment reminder. Um, so I was mentioning like my dog's food. If I forget to buy, I get a message 25 days after because his bags are about 30 days saying like, hey, don't forget to get um, Coco's food. And it, that's a great reminder. So I go get it. So replenishment flows are also really valuable. The last flow that I'll say, um, and this is for like high ticket items is the browse abandonment flow. If setting up a trigger there where it's like, if someone has viewed the same item three times in the last seven days, like shoot them a text message. If you have consent, like that's a really valuable way to like encourage them to make that purchase. You can ask them to like reach out to you if you have any questions, things like that. So those are some of the flows that I'd, I'd, I'd recommend. The welcome series is a must abandoned cards, definitely really valuable. And then the, the, thank you or review message, um, replenishment and browse abandonment. That's quite interesting because when SMS first came out, I noticed a lot of the narrative was, and I've probably been a bit guilty of this my part in the past myself, because of the cost associated with the channel, we were saying like, just use it for sales focused um, sends. But now you've gave the example of the review request and also that conversational approach. We are starting to see more of a context of it being used for just general engagements, like even post-purchase, right? Like a flow. Um, did you have a good experience with the product, like the MPS? If you have a subscription-based product, we've set up like a, a cancellation win-back flow when someone cancels a subscription, just asking them for feedback. And are you seeing a lot more of that, Clavio, like people trying to leverage this conversational approach and embracing it as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think... A lot of people have had a lot of customers or brands that I talk to, they're like, I don't want to do SMS because I don't like getting like invasive messages or I feel like my customers aren't going to like it. The problem is exactly what you just said. They probably only the brand that they signed up for, they were only getting text messages when there were sales or promotions. And that's not helpful. Yep. The best brands that are using SMS, they're sending I'm not saying don't send promotional, maybe send one or two promotional texts a month. But what they're using SMS for is to send like lifestyle, lifestyle content. So like mm -hmm. I was working with a fitness equipment brand. They send, I believe, um, two weeks after fulfillment, they send a text message out with like workout tips. They're not selling anything. They're building a brand loyalty, brand affinity. So that way customers continue to look to them for help and guidance and things like that. That way, when they send their promotional content, these people aren't like just immediately skipping over that or marking it as red. They're actually interested because they trust the brand and they know that the brand is like sharing things that are helpful for them. Absolutely. Yeah. I think what you were saying before as well, Adam, um, it is obviously a conversational marketing tool and that back and forth, if you are going to spend the money, like you said, it can be really expensive. It's like you're investing on getting that information back from your customers, which is 
it's like you're there you you you're a friend you're there to listen to someone someone and it is a conversation and it's more engaging than sending an email back which you know if it's sat there for a couple of days you you it's not as instant so it's not as fresh on the mind exactly i want to ask actually naveen on the uh welcome flow in particular so most of the um traditional advice was like you know obviously go and deliver the coupon right because you're limited in terms of characters and you probably should be focused on the conversion any particular strategies that you've seen work well in the welcome flow like additional messages on top of that yeah i mean i think that that's a mistake that some brands make where they just send that one message and they're done i think like and this is where I think it's, it is really important to also like ask your subscribers, like, how do you want to hear from us? So I'm a big fan of like using multi-step forms where you ask like their email, their phone number, and then ask them, like, do you want us to communicate to you via email or SMS? Mm -hmm. If they pick SMS, then you want your welcome flow to have more than one message. It's not just that coupon message or the first one. Then it's like, you know, uh, giving your your brand's story send that in a text and like have it go to like your our story section on your mm -hmm. website or whatever you want to call out and, and continue to connect with them via the channel they're looking for i think too many brands either don't send enough sms because they're just okay i'll send the one or they don't even send that one and that's problematic or they basically assume like oh if i got a phone number i'm just going to just text you 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 shouldn't um, you should leverage the channel that your subscriber wants to hear from you, which some will say SMS, some will say email, find a solution that allows you to do both. That's mm -hmm. what's the most important thing. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to the list building strategies. Then we'll probably start from the beginning. Like you were talking about the multi-step forms. Uh, what have you seen work well at Clavio? Like you mentioned, um, getting a specific need, uh, reason to give someone's phone number as opposed to email which is definitely you know more willingly passed over um obviously we've seen like that solution pioneers where you give 10 percent and then you get the email and then go in with a deeper discount perhaps to get the sms what are you seeing work really well with your clients yeah i mean i think it's 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 dependent on the brand um some brands that have good margins the the incentive like the discount or free shipping or things like that that's definitely really valuable so the deeper the deeper incentive or the greater incentive for the phone number uh or sms consent definitely works really well i will say i have seen a lot of brands use the exclusivity piece to get mm. sms consent so instead of like discounting um because again i we don't, i don't want to tell people to discount if you don't have to but like what they, what you could easily do is just like have like be the first to know if there's a brand that has like things that sell out all the time um or they drop products and mm. you know customers um just go crazy and fall in love with it like i want to be the first to know like i want to know when things are coming out as soon as possible because i want to buy that so like i think the exclusivity piece is a, is another incentive that isn't um it's not costing you anything. Um, it's not costing the brand anything. I think some other things that are there, um, I've seen some brands do like um, like free samples for SMS consent. So again, there's a cost there, but it's not like discounting full products. So I, I can think of like a cosmetics brand that I have uh, or that I've worked with that will have like, give us your phone number and get a free like lip liner or so mm. lip balm or something like that just to like try us out. It actually works both ways because you get SMS consent and they get to try your product, mm -hmm. um, which works really nicely. So those are some of like the incentives that I that I talk about. And yeah, I would definitely recommend using multi-step forms. Just getting the email and phone number is, is okay, but like the more information you can get, the better. So like, um, I've had um, customers that um, that will ask like your birthday as well because they want to make sure like they take care of you on your birthday. Um, others have asked like gender or pet's name, whatever you want to ask just to personalize that because you do want the messages to be as personal as possible. Makes perfect sense. Let's say we're working backwards, however, like I know a lot of the SMS list building strategies are focused on um, assuming that a new customer comes to your website. 
now um, I can speak personally for like some of our clients. We've started to implement SMS and they've never done it before. And they're saying, how can we get our current email subscribers onto SMS? What would you recommend in that type of scenario? Yeah, that's um, that's something that I think a lot of people are missing. It's it's a huge opportunity. So, um, and and I'll make this specific to Clavio. Um, mm-hmm. But in terms of Clavio, what I've recommended for a lot of customers is create a segment called like all email subscribers without SMS consent or VIP mm-hmm. customers without SMS consent, and then have a targeted sign up form to those specific individuals, where you can basically say like if this person comes back and they're cookied, um, first party cookie through Clavio, so they're cookied for two years. Um, when they come back to the website, you don't have to ask them for their email. Just be like, hey, thanks for coming back. Give us your phone number to get exclusive access to be the first to know. I have seen between 10 to 15% of an email list turn into an turn into SMS subscribers within the first three months of using um that type of form. Another thing that I recommend is you take that same segment and send an email to them saying, like, hey, we're launching SMS click here to sign up or text join or the brand name to the brand mm-hmm. sending number to become an SMS subscriber. So there's a lot of ways that um, you can convert an email list into SMS subscribers. And it is one of the most powerful ways to do that. So I definitely recommend all brands should be looking to convert their email subscribers into SMS subscribers. Absolutely. Make some notes, Leah. We need to pass on the <laughs> I am. <laughs> I feel like I'm mentally recording everything. Um, so obviously we use email and a lot of companies are moving towards using email and SMS. Um, how would you say, how do you use both of them to work together? Um, obviously without having to rule out one email for one person and, and an SMS for another. Like how do you get them to, to work harm- harmoniously together? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think that I think this is this is one of the most important things. Email and SMS should not be competing; they should be complementing each other, um, and that's the most important thing. Um, another thing that I like to recommend, and again, I'm focused on SMS. The best SMS is the one that you don't have to send. If someone's engaging with email content, why waste a text message on them? You admit it. You said it. SMS is more expensive. So if someone's engaging with email content, don't send them a text message. I recommend to brands, like let's say you're doing, if you're doing a flash sale or like a huge promotion, then sending an SMS definitely makes sense. But let's say you're running a promotion for the next week or two. I recommend sending an email out to your subscribers and then create a segment of anyone who didn't open that email that is an SMS subscriber Mm -hmm. and shoot that group a text message. So instead of sending to all 50,000 people, let's say you send the email out and 45,000 people um, don't click on it. You then send the text to 45,000, a small delta, but again, it's still saving you because we know SMS is more expensive. So that's one way that I think it works really well together. Another thing, um, a trick that I I like to recommend um, to every customer that I do a demo with um, is and I, and I know that your team has done this for um, for the clients that you work with as well, but like putting conditional splits in flows where, especially for like the abandoned cart flow, um, setting it up where like if someone has opened or clicked an email at least once in the last seven or 14 days, whatever a good engagement time period is, do not send them a text message. If they're engaging with email content, again, why waste a text message on them? Just send them an email. If they're yeah. not engaging with email, then send them a text message. Um, we actually had a customer that moved to Clavio from another SMS solution. They cut down their SMS spending by almost, or it was 38% with that one conditional split because they were previously sending a abandoned cart text message to everyone. Within Clavio, they were able to only send to those not engaging with email. And again, I know that your team is already leveraging this for your clients, which is great. Um, but it's something that I think, you know, it's it's worth sharing with everyone else. Naveen, that is such an important point. I think that's very understated. Like you said, it's not just trying to increase your revenue, but it's being more cost efficient with your marketing. And that is, um, I mean, so many clients that we've worked with just bleed money because they, they invest in things that they think move the needle 
But in reality, usually like it's very labor intensive work for the staff in house to create and they're just not being economical with their work. So I think that's such an underrated tip is not just to look at how much you can increase something, but how cost efficient you can be with your own marketing. Absolutely. I think, and that's something that's also like when you talk about them working well together, the attribution, I think, is something that goes completely overlooked. If you're using like two different solutions, how do you like, like you just said, someone could spin up SMS and send a message, but how do you know it was the SMS that drove that sale and not the email? If you're using two different solutions, they're not talking. And if you're using GA or another solution like that, which is great, but are you looking at that regularly? And and more importantly, are like the the power users of the solutions looking at it? Leadership, definitely, but like the power users, like I was working with a customer, they were using another um, SMS solution and they were seeing really good results with their welcome email flow. And then after they turned that solution on their welcome email flows, revenue dipped by about 10%. And it was a great flow. It was working really well. They didn't realize that they turned SMS on and that was going to cannibalize some mm -hmm. of their welcome email revenue. So they actually went in and made changes to a very high performing flow because they didn't have the information together. Email and SMS sending is important, but also understanding which channel is driving that sale. That will allow you to further invest, but invest strategically in the right channel. I yeah. love that. I think that's great advice. And um, yeah, it, a lot of food for thought for us as well. Like how, especially once you get a big list, right? Like, like you you use an example, sort of forty five thousand to an additional thirty thousand. That's a lot of money you're spending who sends it to people where you might just be cannibalizing the revenue who might have bought anyway. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty on campaigns. Um, <clears throat> so we talked at the beginning when you came on of just using SMS to like for sales promotions, back in stock, more time sensitive one, VIP drops. Everyone knows, I think that you should leverage SMS for that. Uh, are you seeing anything in particular like really creative ideas being done by other merchants and probably as an add-on question to this any specific advice as we're coming up to black friday cyber monday as well um yeah i mean in terms of creative ideas i i think um like the the uh, fitness company that sends out like workouts i've had other companies that do like um wellness um, send out like uh, meditation playlist, things like that. So like, those are, those are some really creative ways. Again, not, they don't have to be promotions, just like build the brand loyalty with your subscribers. So that I think is, it seems simple, but that's a creative way to do it in terms of uh, black Friday, cyber Monday. If we think about it, how many, like we get so many emails during that time and very few of us have, an infinite amount of income that we can spend. Typically the way that it works is like you look at your emails and you're like, okay, like I need to buy from here. I need to buy from here. If you send an email and it gets like lower in that person's inbox or spam folder, even in the spam folder or promotions folder, whatever that might be, they may run out of money that they're, that they're going to spend because like you see all those other things. With SMS, something that I've been recommending is one, you cut through that noise. Again, if I get a text message and an email, I'm looking at the SMS first every time. So I think it's really important to start building your, or truthfully, you should have been building your list a couple of months ago, but you should start immediately to build that list so you can cut through that noise to get in front of your subscribers in a, in a more meaningful manner. But also a tip that I've been recommending is get ahead of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Like send out campaigns like the Monday or Tuesday before tell people when they're signing up instead of saying i'm going to give you a discount say do you want to be the first to know a week before our black friday drops mm -hmm. that's huge that will get people to sign up especially if you're a brand that people love like they are going to sign up and you didn't give them any incentive you didn't give them a discount you just told them that they'll be the first to know and you may be offering incentives during black friday cyber monday but why have like why combine coupons or promotions or discounts have them be completely separate and just incentivize them with like being the first to know this is something interesting actually because uh, i can see pros of cons for 
um, and this is sort of intertwined to the next question, this approach. But you mentioned like SMS, like if you get an SMS, you read it pretty much instantaneously. And I would, I would imagine it's the same for most people. With that being said, given that it's more expensive, are you sort of sometimes making a judgment call, like on good feel, uh, especially around like Black Friday, right? It might, might be more cost efficient to send an email, but is the return going to be greater if you're going with text? So on a general like campaign level, would you recommend going in with, I know it's not going to be black and white this, but would you usually go in with email first and then SMS to non-openers who have consent or do you sort of mix the rules depending on like the context of the promotion? I would mix the rules based on the context of the promotion. I think for like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I think those times it's okay, like it's okay to do like the big SMS sends just because it is such like an important time. And again, we're competing with so many other brands uh, or excuse me. Yeah, there's so many other brands competing with you for your subscribers' attention that like you need to get to them as quickly as possible. So I think the SMS campaigns during that time make sense. I think the like using email and sending to non-openers makes more sense for like your regular like mm -hmm. monthly promotions that you're sending out. But for like urgent um, or like event-driven messaging like this, I think that's when like that's what SMS is for. It's the urgency. Like SMS yeah. is, it's an urgent channel. It gets to me right away. So, so I think it makes sense to send more to, I send, it makes sense to send those campaigns to your audiences at that time. Yeah. I can, I can completely see a perspective. A comment here, Otabelli. Thank you very much for the support. Number <laughs> one fan. Um, I know uh, we've sort of covered that a little bit, but I'll let Leah ask the next question as we get a bit deeper yeah. into it. I just, I just wanted to mention as well. Obviously, I think with with marketing via email, there's there's a massive highlight on, you know, customer journey, personalization, customizing that, and the idea of picking between, especially around Black Friday, it's like being bombarded with all those emails and maybe some of those texts. It's like you feel like. Oh, actually, they're not just trying to get a sale. They do actually care. They're, they're trying to, to reach out and come and get you a little bit and be like, it's going to be okay. Come and buy from us. It'll be calm. It's going to be fine, which is great. Um, but, yeah, we need to get back on it. We need to get on the MS, SMS. Um, speaking of which, what do you think the pros are, the pros and cons of SMS versus email? Yeah, so I think um... – they're two very different channels. So you can't just take like email and say like, I'm just going to send that same email as an SMS. I don't, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. And I'm like, okay, don't do this, please. So that's the first thing. I think the pros of SMS, like I said, it's urgent. It gets to the customer or the subscriber right away. Um, it can be conversational. So you can like have a conversation um, back with a, a subscriber really easily. The con is it's not really like a, you can't have multiple calls to action. It's not something that's easily forwarded. And it's really difficult to like save that content. Um, whereas email is really good for like long form content, things that might need to be forwarded, instructions, things like that, like tips and tricks. Like you can, you can send it as an email instead of like a link. And that way it can be saved. People can print it, like whatever you need to do. But with email, some of the cons are, again, there are so many emails going out. We haven't gotten to the same point with SMS where like there are promotion and spam folders. So your emails might not even get to the inbox. So those are some of the cons here. So I think that there's just a balance and that's why using both together is the most important thing. Yeah, completely yeah. agree. Um, just a quick one, Naveen, on the, the I think we, we touched on it a little bit, but in terms of like timing between sending an email and SMS, any rules of thumb that you would recommend, let's say on a campaign, if someone doesn't open an email within, I don't know, 16, 24 hours, would you then recommend going in with SMS? I typically say 24 hours is what I would give for an email to email engagement. If someone's not engaging with an email within 24 hours, that's when sending the SMS makes sense. Makes sense. Yep. I think you gave a really good summary overall of the how to use both of them in a complimentary way. So just to finish on um, probably a bit of a boring question, but an important one, um, it sort of thing people think of last sometimes, probably should be the forefront. 
as powerful as SMS is, like there's this clear uh, legalities and compliance people need to be aware of. And I know this differs based on territory, territory to territory. Otherwise, you guys would have just released it right in like every single country in the world. So do you want to give a brief overview, maybe um, which you're in the territory you're most familiar with in North America, and then explain some of the complications perhaps of why Clavio can't just go SMS is available all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, for the, you're absolutely right. Compliance is something that's, that's, it's important for almost all marketing, but for SMS, it's, it's hugely important. Like we've all heard, like you can be fined up to $1,500 per SMS message sent to someone that's not consented. And that can add up really quickly. Um, so Clavio has taken compliance very, very seriously. It's one of the reasons why like we delayed launching it because we wanted to make sure that we had everything like set up for our customers. The big thing that I like to highlight for our customers is that we've done a lot of that hard work so you don't have to. Mm -hmm. In Clavio, there are countless checks in the solution itself that will not physically allow you to send a message to someone who hasn't given you explicit SMS consent. Um, when you're importing a list, we're asking for timestamps. We're asking so that you know that you have all the information that's there. So we've built a tool that you don't need to worry about that. And you're absolutely right. That's one of the reasons why we haven't, you know, brought Clavio to every country in the world because there are so many different rules and regulations that what's allowed, what's not allowed. Clavio is not in the business to build something and then say, customer, you figure it out. We, one of AB, our CEO's favorite phrases is, we do the hard stuff. Compliance is hard. Let us take care of it. So that's why we haven't gone to the other countries because we want to make it that the tool does that work for you. Some of the things that you need to know, like um, on checkout pages, you need to have like a explicit checkbox for email and SMS. They have to be two different checkboxes um, mm -hmm. for consent. When you have like sign up forms, there's language that you need to include there. And in Clavio accounts, we have it pre built in all the sign up forms that are there. Um, when you're sending messages, um, like there are term, like, um, there are shaft or industries that violate shaft policies, sex, hate, alcohol, firearms, and tobacco. So you can't send content that's related to that. So there's a number of like compliance pieces that are there. Clavio has done the work that you don't need to really worry about it. Um, but you know, there's definitely things that like you're going to want to update your terms of uh, terms of service and privacy policy to highlight that we're collecting your SMS consent yeah. for marketing purposes and things like that. So, you know, definitely things that you need to worry about. I always, anytime I'm talking to a customer, I always preface it by saying, I am not a lawyer, nor am I providing legal advice. Um, talk to your own team about that. But Clavio has taken that into consideration as we've built the solution. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for your insights on that. Just a final question, actually, from me. Um, it's a very competitive market. I don't want to name any names, but, you know, I know you guys, like, one of the unique selling points is you've said of using Clavio for SMS is that it's all managed under one roof. Do you want to just give us a brief overview of why you think people should use Clavio for SMS compared to other solutions just before we finish and what the benefits are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I personally think, and this is coming from a subscriber's point of view, I have got, I've signed up, like I said, for a lot of SMS marketing programs. And the times that I immediately unsubscribe is when I get an email and a text message at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Like if I sign up for the a welcome flow or if I'm a worse is when I'm abandoning my cart when I get an email and a text at the exact same time that's really frustrating to me and I'm opting out from one of those channels if not both of them the value of having Clavio for email and sms is that you can easily see and make sure that that doesn't happen instead of needing like three screens one for your Clavio flows one for your sms journeys and then a third screen where like you map out email and text together so that way they don't they're not sent at the exact same time. In Clavio, you have a single flow builder where you can easily build mm -hmm. your flow where you can see the SMS goes out after 30 minutes, the email goes out after two hours, text message, and then you can also like split it. Like if I'm engaging with email content, then I don't get an SMS. So to me, the number one reason, and the reason why 
we built this was to build a better subscriber experience. Brand's most valuable asset is their customer list. If you burn through that by oversending, you're losing your most valuable asset. So at the end of the day, the goal is to make sure that you're servicing your subscribers in a meaningful way and connecting with them via the right channels, which is what Clavio allows you to do really easily. Great way to finish. And that is exactly why we waited for you guys to um, really push on with the product before we started to integrate it into our services and roll it out with clients. And now the day is here. You can see the benefits well and truly. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll take my commissions later for anyone who signs <laughs> up. After. Um, Naveen, thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with us today. It's honestly uh, been really great to talk about strategy. If anyone wants to contact you, um, learn a bit more about SMS from yourself directly or Clavio, what's the best way? Um, you can absolutely connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, <clears throat> we're on LinkedIn Live. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn Live. Um, my tagline is SMS all day, so you can send me a message literally anytime you want to. Um, you can also reach out to Clavio. Um, we have a ton of resources for SMS. So reach out to Clavio, reach out to me personally on LinkedIn. Anything, anything that I can help with, I'm happy to help. Amazing. Well, Naveen, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. I know it's relatively early still in the morning. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to just drop them in the comments of the event and I will tag Naveen so he can get back to you. Well, until next time, thank you very much, Leah, to yourself as well. Hello. Fabulous. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Cheers. we'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.